Behind a wrought iron fence there is a memorial space. There lies a single headstone and a stone monument bearing the name Pioneer Memorial. Who were these early residents? And where did these remains come from? The story begins in the year 1860 in the province territory of New Brunswick, Canada. When a 20-year-old farmer named John Jack Doyle heads west to California to meet his destiny. He makes the cross-continental journey by sea. Setting sail from the northeast. Heading south along the eastern seaboard. Rounding South America. Around the southern tip of Cape Horn. And eventually arriving north in San Francisco. A knowledgeable farmer in search of good farm land, Doyle would eventually travel east towards the Sierras to the small town known as Junction. A settlement that was once a stagecoach station named Griders. A small town that would be named for the Junction location where the Central Pacific and Central California railroads would meet. The name Roseville would first appear in the year 1864, when the town plot was first drawn up designating the area as a potential trading center. The completion of the track lines would transform this sleepy rural town into a major railroad hub for years to come. John Doyle quickly established himself in the area, as a farmer, along with raising stock. He acquires the name, Lucky Jack, as he was known to be a heavy drinking gambler. And known to get into fist fights and arguments from time to time. His winnings from gambling allow him to invest in land and cattle. By 1871, Lucky Jack already acquires 130 acres and establishes Doyle Ranch. And, in 1874, he marries Clara B. Murtis. From the beginning, Lucky Jack saw a bright future for Roseville. He possessed an inordinate faith in the growth potential of the area, and was content to sit on his acquisitions. In the 1890s when times were bad, he began to judiciously buy up choice building lots, at cheap prices from business leaders leaving the area. County assessor records show that the Doyle Ranch property was approximately 300 acres in size. With the modern-day boundaries of Folsom Road, Douglas Boulevard and Santa Clara Drive. A new family ranch home was built on the property. In a newspaper article dated November 181909, in an anonymous editorial titled, A Deserted Cemetery. There is an abandoned cemetery on Folsom Road which is described as being dilapidated. With only a few dozen graves remaining.
In January of 1910, John Doyle falls ill. William J. Doyle would inherit the family real estate properties, while his younger sister Una inherited money instead. A lifelong farmer and shrewd businessman, William J. makes an initial investment into the newly formed Roseville Telephone Company in 1930. Doyle would become the majority shareholder by the following year, and eventually assume the role of company president in 1917. A position he would hold until his retirement in 1954. William J. marries Hazel Wright in 1916. They would go on to have a total of five children leading to future generations of Doyles. Never one to be stuck behind a desk. William J. would continue to farm the family ranch with the help of his three sons, Bill Jr., Tom, and Bob, tending to the vast vineyards on the property along with raising cattle, sheep, and turkeys. In a newspaper article from 1947, Doyle sought to turn over the desecrated cemetery to the county for preservation and maintenance. However, there is no record of this ever having been officially approved. Another major development in the advancement of Roseville was the construction of Interstate 80 in the year 1956. The following year, William J. Doyle passes away on May 29, 1957 at the age of 81. He would leave the entire Doyle estate to be equally divided amongst the family. The Doyle family estate would spend nearly three years tied up in probate court, with the result of the parcel of land on Folsom Road eventually being sold to the developer, All Smith Company of Beverly Hills in late November 1959. A court petition was soon filed by the All Smith Company to relocate the cemetery. The man responsible for overseeing the removal process was local funeral director Kurt Cochran.
shortly after the pioneer remains were relocated to the Berry Street Cemetery, the property was then sold to the Draper Company of San Francisco in February 1960. With plans to develop Roseville's first shopping center, Roseville Square. After a series of delays, construction of Roseville Square would finally commence in the spring of 1961. Construction of Roseville Square would be completed by the fall, and the grand opening took place the first week of November, 1961.